statement of interpretation, and the evidence is in the body of your essay, and you're ending up with what is significant, and it's not a recap of the significance, what this means. What I'd like to do today is take a look at this, this test and get through as much of the material as possible because much of it will show up. Uh, I think the low is a 28, the high is a 66. That's raw score. And 66 is right that five range. I guarantee that. I'm not even worried about it. The 50s are in the five range, too, more than likely. Okay, now, if you're right down those, that low 30 range, if you know 35 questions, that's fine. But you can't answer 100 if you only know 35 because you'll end up negative almost. Okay, let's quickly go through that. Some of this should have been easy. Some? Yeah, Heather. Are all Multiple choice uh, is one half essay. Yeah. Okay, that's why I'm spending more time here. Okay, let's take a look at this test. Uh, I'll get through as much as possible. I'm going to take a look at those questions to start with that you should have a background in. And that is about 70% of these questions. 30% are throwaways. That's about right naturally. Okay. Number two. Question on the Renaissance. I mean, we'll see. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, what does that mean? Okay. Maintenance and delivery is a system of feudalism going back to the Middle Ages. If you want, we talked about the first day feudalism and how the Renaissance was a break from feudal society. You got that by process of elimination. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Which of the following was not a policy supported by new monarchies in Western Europe during the late 15th and 16th century? That's Renaissance and Reformation. So they're asking you, which is not a Reformation or Renaissance characteristic? Okay, that's what they're asking. Enhancing the nation's wealth. That's a Renaissance characteristic. Uh, granting titles of nobility. That's something that lasts well into the age of enlightenment. Well, titles of nobility is simply... We grant titles all the way, well, still in the 19th and 20th century. We've never eliminated that. Okay, it's creating a more consistent legal system adapting to Roman law. Well, we eliminate feudal law and we go back to a Roman law, especially when we see the next picture that's over here, when we talk about the Roman influence in the Napoleonic Empire. Uh, viewing the goals of the church and state as one. That's the theocracy. That's the Henry VIII of England. By process of elimination, you're getting down to livery and maintenance. That's a privilege, that's a feudal privilege that was eliminated as we entered into the early part of the Renaissance time period. That I didn't expect you to know because those are terms that we didn't use. That's why I was going to skip over that question. But by process of elimination, you should have had a pretty good guess in that area. Yeah. Were there any other European ones that had the. Uh, Henry IV, the Gallic Church, we began to see that. Uh, in Russia, as the Russian Church evolved and evolved as an adjunct for most of the zone. Number two, you should have, you should have got this one correct, I'd say. The earliest conduct of modern diplomacy, the word modern, just like the word call and call lean. And then you see the word call, and you're dealing with the opera scene, you're thinking of John Calvin. Okay, predestination means that you've been called. That means that that has already been set up for you. And we'll get to that in a few seconds. Okay, they give you the earliest conduct of diplomacy, the city states of Renaissance in Italy, that's the earliest time period. That's the modern time period. Modern time period begins in the Renaissance. You look for that. They gave the Treaty of Westphalia. Well, that's the 17th century. Uh, Napoleonic Empire, that's the 19th century. The growth of national states in the Eastern Mediterranean Europe. That is, well, the national states in Eastern Europe don't come until after really the 17th century and the 18th century diplomatic revolution. We say the modern time period begins with the Renaissance and part of the modern time period is modern diplomacy. Well, you have a city state like Florence dealing with Genoa and Milan and Rome. Okay, that's, that's what we're looking at, that early question on the Renaissance. Right now. They take words, everybody will be giving you the history of the Yeah, they, they don't give you false information there. The next one was so easy, if anyone missed it, the, what they've done is they've thrown a segment at you. And as they throw a segment of a quote at you, they don't expect you to have memorized all the book reads. How did I read book at you? And that's basically one of the most they use. But they expect you to be able to buzz in and zero in on one word. Yeah, that word is what? Utopia. Utopia. And you better know that Utopia was written by Sir Thomas More. And so when you take a look at it, that stands out at you. And, and make sure you take a look at the excerpt. They'll give you an excerpt, and that excerpt will have some sort of buzzword in it. For example, if you see will to power, 
You gotta say Nietzsche, Nietzsche. If you talk a lot about something to the effect that the ends justify the means, you gotta get Machiavelli. They're gonna give that to you. And it's a common practice that you do on this exam. Who's the fear of God? Oh, that's the fear of God. Anarchy. 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 Anarchy.
be called to give But you also have to call to give like Nelson. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. The idea that God has somehow acted in your life to make you what you are. And then you use your time to make that something. And make money. <laughs> then you use that to make money, make a profit off of it. Yes. The Huguenots are French Calvinists. Do uh, you like you like another question there? Um, which one are you looking at? Oh, oh, the Huguenots. The Huguenots are something French Catholic, uh, French Catholics. John Calvin in Geneva. The movement begins in Switzerland. When we find them in France, we call them Huguenots. When we find them in England, this is what we call them. The Puritans are Calvinists. That's where they're, that's where they're, they're, they're from, and that's what they might put that question. How to learn more life? The Puritans in England, the Huguenots of France, the Dutch Reformed in Holland, the Dutch Calvinists, the Republicans of Calvinists. What are the Lollards? The Lollards are a minority. The Lollards are a minority. The Lollards are a minority in England, and they're the ones who say, go right to the scripture, and there's no function of the Are they like the more extreme? Yeah, and remember, the most extreme ones in England were the separatists, which we call the Pilgrims. They left the country. Okay, don't call it closing the theory. I'll give you that. Okay. Okay, Spain is, uh, Philip II, which is not historically accurate. We should have gotten this one too. Okay, Spain, Philip II of Spain is the man who tries to crush England. He's the man who sent the Spanish Armada. He's the man who is interested in the reassertion of Catholic power in England. He was successful in his attempt to suppress English Protestantism. Well, right away, the English are what today? Right. And right away, that's just blankly patently false. Everything else is just true in it. And so he was a failure. And he dies a failure. He knows he's a failure. <laughs> okay. <Right. laughs> yeah. Number 10. Oh, the poor man, how he dies. He has his, his, his bed lifted up in the chapel of church. Thousands of candles lit all around him. So his bed can be lifted up so he can look at the crucifix and Christ and the crucifix directly in the face in his last waning hours. And he's still at that point as he's looking at the crucifix in the face with a crucified Christ on it in the middle of a chapel with thousands of candles. He's still trying to give orders for the fifth invasion of England. There's not just one invasion, there's five. Only one we talked about. Because that was horrendous, but the other ones never really fit off the mark anyway. Okay. Now, number ten is what they call, they give you a diary question, and they then give you some explorers, and can only fit one. It's Christopher Columbus, believe it or not. Okay. Now, yeah, it was very. It was so obvious you're afraid to mark it down. And that, look out for that. There will be some so obvious you can't get right. Okay. Of all the men, he says this. Why? Uh, I thought it must be mainland. Right away, Columbus. That's what he kept on saying. The province of Cathay, China. As I found neither towns nor villages on the sea coast, but only a few hamlets with the inhabitants, I could not hold conversations because they all immediately fled. I kept on the same route, thinking I could not fail to light upon some large cities and towns. Okay, the other people you eliminate real quickly. Can you navigate near one on our voyage? She simply sent the Portuguese south. Hernan Cortez, <laughs> he found the city. It was called Timothy Plum, and he looted the thing in time. Ferdinand Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan doesn't look to write about anything. He gets a spear in his throat in the Philippines, and he doesn't come back. Vasco da Gama, he gets to India. He brings back a vast amount of wealth. It's only Columbus that has the natives running around and saying, I think I'm in China, I think I'm in China, I think I'm in China, but he never said it. But the other thing is, and I found it so large, I thought it must be the mainland. It doesn't matter about the island or something. Yeah. So why do we. It also lands on the mainland, he goes four times. He sails four times. We generally only really look at his first voyage because that's when we have a massive Spanish fleet that follows the first voyage. Instead of three ships, we have something like 150 ships. Same boat. Would India have large cities at that time? Yes, they did. So, like. Yeah, they have large cities, and they, they, they're of the old trading route from to China. Indian culture is one of the oldest one of the, uh, it is the second oldest one of the cars. It's the book of the Babylonians and the Assyrians, which the cars say approximately 5,000 years ago. 5,000 BC, speaking of the second Continuous. And that's why, uh, when you take a look at Western culture, the oldest area of Western culture is the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and it gives you some idea. Um, Confucius and Christ are contemporaries. Uh, it gives some idea that the Upanishads are written in, in, in Hindu writing approximately 2,000 years before the Uh 
when you start putting those frameworks, Buddha is 500 years before the culture. And so once, once you get that kind of reference and you realize how ancient the culture is, and Buddha is a reformer of the Hindu faith. That's what I was proud of this. Number 11. If number 11 you should have gotten. Again, it's one of those deduction questions. Take a look at, okay, what you say about Portugal's role in the 16th century is incorrect. Portugal did not go transatlantic. Transatlantic means, what are you doing? You're crossing it. But didn't they go to Brazil? Yeah. You take the initiative to transatlantic. When did they go to Brazil? After who's there? After Spain's already there. Okay, so they're, they're second to that. Their they're main route is to the south. Everything else is true. Number 12, there's always a statement about James I of England and how he is an old king. Now, they're talking about, as it is atheism and blasphemy after the dispute with God can do, is presumptuous of a high contempt uh, and the subject to dispute what a king can do. He says a king has absolute power. When he comes to the throne of England, that's the attitude he brings with him. And you take a look at what they're giving you here. It was Victor Emmanuel, that is the 19th and 20th century. Louis XVI for France, we know that's the late 18th and the 18th century, just to make it out of it. Russia's Alexander II, that is late 18th century. Joseph II, that is the, uh, 19th century. England's James I, that my friend is 16th century, 17th century. He's the first one. He is the one who justifies his rule by the mind right. He follows Elizabeth and finally Elizabeth is not going to be a he, he, he wrote up an essay on what it is to be a king. And they've given just a fraction of that essay. Are you saying that there's a no, this, this man's the first, this man's the first man to say that. Right? that more, more likely. What happens after this? After this, is Louis XVI really an absolute monster? No. He calls the States General. And Victor Emmanuel II, he's not an absolute monster. He has a, a parliament. Russia's Alexander II even has a Duma. And then Oscar Joseph II has, has, has a parliament as well. And Martin Luther will be, and Martin Luther on that test, you'll get the 95 thesis, or if you get an address to the Christian nobility of the German nation, what he's looking at is to simply tell the German nobleman that if you follow a Protestant faith, what's in it for you? And that's what he's saying. He encourages religious and political autonomy for the Roman Church. He needs support, and he's telling, trying to tell the nobleman of Germany, become a Protestant of the Catholic Church. Now, he's doing it for religious reasons, Luther. But he's saying to the nobleman, besides religious reasons, this is why it's good for you. And that's why he addresses that, that very practical and pragmatic. See. Number 14 is simply, that's like off an IQ test. 14 is like off an IQ. It has nothing to do with what you study. Okay. Oh, did, did you get that on that? That's a goblin. I've got, I've got brains. I might not get, I got brains, though. Okay. <laughs> Greatest right. meantime time simply is not so. Now, what they want is... Einstein's theory of relativity. I said, well, they, it's wonderful. It's a great question. But it's not something you get out of a textbook. You know, the other ones they give you, my, my man, Alfred Russell Wallace, that's evolution at the same time as Darwin. Newton. Newton is basically the age of reason. Um, Rodergen and, and Russell, philosopher, Russell, of course, the philosopher, of Russell's in there, and Rodergen, uh, 19th century. Okay. So that basically is saying, do you really know Einstein? Again, they give you another picture. You're not going to have this many. You'll have probably one. In this case, Romanesque. Uh, Romanesque, again, whenever you see the either Corinthian columns or the, the high triumphal arches that are, denote Roman architecture. Somewhere along the line. Yeah. There's some of the triangle and the top. I mean, I thought part of the mountain is going to be Oh, you, you think it's classical right away? But then I have like, like yeah, two columns that are just like... That's, that's what Romanesque is. You can also say that it's not going to be a Gothic No, not Gothic Cathedral. Uh, Gothic Cathedral will be heavy ornamentation. Why in buttresses, buttresses only a mud Because they have big holes. Yeah. Can you explain again why it's Romanesque? Yeah, Romanesque, number one. Take a look at... It's plain relative to the Gothic. Number two, you have the use of the arches. Number three, you have use of the columns that are both Corinthian columns. Whenever you see a Corinthian column that is not Greek, that is Roman. In our symbol in Washington, is that, is that no, a campus leaves. Uh, here, 
your general knowledge applied to a specific situation and drawing a conclusion based on a series of answers. For the most part. Second to before that. Okay, 2021. Uh, 20 is D. That would be simply a retention question. I would not expect you to have that one. 21. All the following statements describing Colbert's economic policy during the reign of Ruth XIV are true, except. Okay. Colbert will be on that test. He is the father of French mercantilism. Okay, you plug that in your mind. French mercantilism. And they're saying, do you know what mercantilism means? And they give you then, uh, in this case, five different answers. Okay, number one, A is the answer. Mercantilism does not encourage laissez faire. Laissez faire means leave alone, no government regulation. Mercantilism says regulate for the well being of society. They are contradictory. Okay, that's right. Number 22, again, is one you should get. It's C, Galileo Galilei. In their historic confrontation in 1632, the church believed that faith should dominate, but he maintained that truth should be allowed to persuade. The situation was descriptive of the trial of. Okay, that's the man who we. In fact, we even had a video on that one. Number 23, don't expect to know it. It's one of those throwaway type questions. The answer is D. You should not really have had to know that one. 24 is one of those opinion questions that. Um, I would call one of those throwaway questions as well, too. If you answered it, well, good, but more than likely you'd leave that one blank. Now, because there's two answers that you could jump in there. Daniel Defoe's novel the answer is B, in 18th century industrialism. And there's only two answers you can choose from. What two answers? B and D. B and D. And D. <laughs> I, I, that's what they're testing. If anyone, if anyone in this classroom, mark that in this, mark anything besides B and D. Go home, take a club, go boing, boing, boing. Okay, ready? Yeah, you go. Okay, they love to do this kind of question. Look, be real careful. In Daniel Bowes now, can they give you the date? 18th century situations. One is 18th century mercantilism or industrialization. A mastery of his environment. Mastery of his environment, try it, but I don't like the question. I want to skip it myself. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 25. If anyone missed C, I'd be real disappointed. Real politics, alliances, contemporary conveniences. C, that's 25 to C. That's easy. 26, I would not expect you to know landlord states would be A. However, the next one. 26, Eastern Europe, landlord states. 27. 27, I'd expect you to know. That is D. Which of the following accurately identifies Carlos Richelieu's most important contribution to the course of French history? He was the one who tried to centralize power in the kingdom of the monarchy, and that's what he pulled off. 28. I would expect you to know. E. The Royal Society, chartered in 1662, is good evidence that E. Government patronage of science helped advance the Enlightenment views. Enlightened views. Okay, that's the Royal Society of England, of course. I'd also expect you to know the philosophers. The next one. The French philosophers of the 18th century placed their hopes for reform with which of the following? You had a whole chapter on enlightened despots. Frederick the Great. You have the letters of Voltaire to Frederick. Okay, but he's a philosopher writing to this reform. Okay. So that was C. Number 30. To fulfill one's duty within that station in life to which God has been pleased to call you, there's that word again, was mentally expressed by, okay, B, 19th century liberals to the working class. Okay. Yeah, why wasn't it B? Okay, we're on 30. To fulfill one's duty within that station in life to which God has been pleased to call you was mentally expressed by. 
okay, the new liberal said you're in this position, you can call to this position, and remember what a liberal was in the 19th century? The dealer. That's right. The dealer that will go into a That's not a class. Huh? Isn't that what you're That's right. Isn't it liberal more of a economic thing? They can call the reason for it. But they're testing you. I thought it was somewhere along this line. They're testing you. You know what a 19th century liberal is? You have to know this in that's what they're going to ask you. Some form of that question. Oh, it's... What is it? D? Oh, okay, okay. It's a call. 70 cents thousand for religious converts. No, because uh, that's not their station in life. Nobody did okay. anything. Number 431, let me get as many of his answers to you as possible. 31 uh, would be C. Let me give you some answers that we're running out, and I just want to pick on a few of these questions. The ones I really want to get to. 32, you're going to have some sort of map question. This one happens to be A. Now remember on your maps, if you ever see a unified Italy and Germany, it has to be after 1871. If you see a Poland appear on the map, that means it's after 1919. When Poland moves on the map, uh, or you have Lithuania, Latvia, uh, Estonia on the map, it's after 1919. It's after 1945 when those Flickr. countries disappear. I remember Okay. Yeah. And that is Renaissance, that is banking, and that is mining interest in industry. Yeah. 33? Yeah. Okay. A, yes. 33 is D. 34, B. Don't worry about that one. We wouldn't expect you to know that. 35, okay. E, know who the levelers are. They show up. English Revolution, a group of Cromwell's forces who believed in no king, all men should vote, all men have a free access to government. There is no differences among men. They're called the levelers. They were not the majority, but we like to look back at the levelers as sort of a the sign of things to come, the sign of things to come in the levelers. Levelers, Cromwell's army, they wanted the equality of all men before the law and in government. So know those people. Um, 36 is D, don't, that would be a, one of those throwaways. Uh, 37 would be A, again, one of those throwaway questions, unless you're into philosophy, and they wouldn't expect that. However, 38, you should know, pragmatic sanction will show up, and that's E. Pragmatic sanction, you have to know what that means. It's an order given from on high, saying this is what's going to happen. This is, thus shall it be. Austria, Austria had no history of allowing a woman to become empress. And so uh, Charles basically said that Maria Theresa will become his heir to the throne when he dies. She did, and of course you have a war breaking out in a short time period. The War of Austria Succession. Okay. War of Spanish Succession. Okay. Was not in part motivated by the religious differences. Again, do you know when the wars of religion ended? That's what they're asking you. And the wars of religion, pick the date, 1648, Pharaoh War. Do you really know that? And whenever they give you that question about religious and religious wars, it's after 1648, that's the exception. It's not happening. Now, I know you want to talk about Ireland, but that's fine. But basically, that's not a religious question. It's a leftover from religion and something else. 40, this was kind of fun. Supporters of the Jacobite cause during the first half of the 18th century would support which of the following? D, Stuart attempts to enlist Scotland's help in the invasion of England. Okay. In fact, we even have a little bit of that. Next one. Another picture, you'll only have one probably on the exam. You really know, okay, you really know what culture that represents. That's Holland, that would be C. How do you know? It's not England or how it's not Spain. Those it's hat. Those hat. hat. Did you look up the office says Holland? You need better glasses. I need closer. Now I can. Okay. Yeah. 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 42, B, I would expect you to get that idea. 43, D, I don't want to stop there right now. Uh, 44, C, 45, E, uh, 46, B, 47, D, you should not have missed that under any circumstances. Which group was not represented in the, with their list of Calliers with the French Estates General? Now, 
The list of palliers is your list of concerns, your list of grievances presented to the government. The middle class represent the third estate. The peasants being illiterate were not represented. Their, their grievances were not heard, even though supposedly the third estate represented them. 48 is B. Uh, 49 is C. 50 uh, is D. 51 is C. 52 is A. That's another one of those ones that you should automatically get. That's, that's a give me question. Uh, both Voltaire and Erasmus uh, both criticized hypocrisy in the guise of religion. Both men used that, that satire. Uh, 53, here it is. Uh, the continental system you should have gotten. Closed war against the nation of shopkeepers. You know who the nation of shopkeepers will be? That's England. And it's going to use the continental system to boycott the English markets. Uh, 54 D, 55 C, uh, 56 A, European balance of power. Know what that term means? It will show up relative to English uh, foreign policy or the Congress of Vienna. 57 uh, B, 58 E, 59 C, 60 A, uh, 61 D, 62 E. I won't expect necessarily unless you're heavy in the literature to get that. Now, Again, they'll have some sort of graph, which I don't see on this desk. But 63, they'll give you some sort of graph to interpret. Uh, in this case, they give you a map with signs and symbols on it. And it's B, the spread of industrialism. So B, 64, B, 65, C, uh, 66, B, 67, A, 68, D, and 69, B, 70, E, uh, 71D, 72A, uh, 73C, uh, 74C, 75B, 76C, 77D, 78B, 79A, 80, there's that word we used before, the nihilist, C, and in fact it was the same, it's the same book we talked about, Fathers and Sons. That's all about it. Yeah, I got to 81D, 82B, 83, there is a Balfour Declaration, A, with, with, the, pro, with the limits that we talked about, 84E, okay, there's the Sleafman plan that we just got finished with, 85C, 86C, 87D, 88, okay, one thing. Sean Finn, that will be either. There's always a question to an Ireland that's very really interesting to me. E, 89, D, 90, C, 91, B, the idea of Dimmestrom, the idea of either that or Ancelus will show up. 92, C, 93, D, 94, A, we talked about the dress rehearsal of the practice of in Spain. Uh, 95, B, the treatise of government, we actually read over that one. Uh, 96, E, that's positivism again, we talked about that. 97, D, 98, the Salad of Papa, the and then before that. 98, A, 99, C, 100, B. Now, real quickly, I will let you take these booklets home with you, okay? Oh, good. Good. Just on Monday, excuse me, on Tuesday, bring them back to me, these things I do want back. Suggestion. Go very, very closely over those five handouts I gave you. Make sure you're familiar with the people, the events, and the ideas. Look at this test for what they're really testing you on. And quite often it's how you think and how you reason based on a knowledge that you all have. And then when you're answering those questions, if you can get it down to a couple of responses that look good to you, answer. But if you're absolutely, it's like Lost. planet Mars, Take it like an SAT and just skip that one because there is about a quarter of a point subtracted for the total number of rights. And you're looking for minimum 35, you hit the 60, 50, and you're right there. And we have a few people that are right there. Others of you, remember. <laughs> living space. It's Hitler's policy of expansion and living space for the German right. No Anschluss. If it's not living strong, it'll be Anschluss. Yeah. Good. Sit up, please. Let me tell you this all again. Determinism means that what is going to occur must happen. Marx is a determinist. Marx is a determinist because it said the communist society will inevitably come about. So determinism means that a situation has to follow almost in the bit of natural law. 
It's like social Darwin's. It will occur. Other specific terms. Remember what they're doing on this test here. A lot of it is reasoning. A lot of it is, do you see the word Holland printed on the map? A lot of it is, a lot of it is cause and effect. They say, what caused this? They give you a series of answers, and a lot of the answers come before the event. They can't see the effect. In other words, they're testing your reasoning ability. No. So don't make foolish mistakes and answer and guess on questions that are outside the printer. They expect the number to be outside. So once you know, analyze what they're asking for. If they give you a date of the question, that's important. Okay? There might be a treaty that you've never heard of, but look at the date. It's the age of enlightenment, and they have a series of responses down there. You look for an enlightenment response, and then you consider what's, what's happening. If they give you a, a word like utopia, or a word like evolution, or a word like ego or id, or a word like, right away, you're keying in. They're looking for a buzzword. Are you familiar with this author and what he wrote? And if you know basically his buzzword, at least you didn't contact with that. They're looking for that. And so, in each of the phrases they give you, there's something. They will see, do you, can you really read a map? Can you really read a bar graph? And they're given a historical context. And then, write your couple essays over the weekend so you feel comfortable about a cold essay, whether it's on enlightenment, whether it's on reformation, use intellectual history, and use the, the fingers so you can put it in like a lock, uh, zero, minus two, and the like. And then just overview like, your DVD. You'll we'll be all right. But remember, no wild guessing. Those who from the head. That's right. Yes, he came in. Andy came in, he got one of these, yeah. I gave everything to Andy, so he's all set.